Back some three decades ago in my teenage years, I just didn't understand the adult world's preoccupation with money. It just seemed to me that this relentless pursuit of paper bills and electronic numbers in a bank account was overshadowing everything important in life. And I really didn't understand why, because there didn't seem to be really any inherent value in these paper bills and electronic numbers. I mean, I knew that you needed money if you wanted things like food and clothes and shelter. But I didn't understand why these basics had to be bought and sold. Uh, to me, the whole adult world of work and money just seemed strange and alienating and unnecessarily complicated. Now, my ignorance about work and money didn't do me too much harm during my early 20s. Um, my career goal at the time was to be a musician, and I felt I knew the odds were against me making a reliable income from it. But that didn't matter because I felt like, well, music was what made me happy. This is my identity. And if music wasn't paying the bills, well, I could always just wait tables. And I really didn't mind waiting tables all that much because the job was flexible enough so that I could work my hours around what I felt was my real career as a musician. Because when I wasn't, on days when I was not waiting tables, I could still isolate myself away in a room and practice for up to 10 hours at a time. And when music jobs came up, or at least local ones, I could always just switch my shifts around. And if a music job came up on the road, I could always just quit my restaurant job. And then I would just get a new one when the gig was over. So while I was single and childless, um, this priority system of music first and money and uh, personal interaction second, well, that was keeping me reasonably happy. But now once I got married at age 25 and became a father at age 26, um, this lifestyle of mine was suddenly filling me with stress and on two different levels. First of all, I was um, un completely unprepared for what should have been the predictable expenses of fatherhood. And I found myself overwhelmed with financial problems. Second, making music my number one priority meant that my wife and kid were a distant second. And um, I recognized that this was leading me not only to having a distant relationship with my son, but such a distant relationship with my wife that it was probably going to lead to divorce because I wasn't contributing enough. I wasn't contributing financially or emotionally, and I wasn't doing my fair share of the child rearing. Now, when I tried to um, move away from being so obsessive about my career and trying to make at least some time for my new family, well, that gave me stress, too, because I was, I was still in this field that's intensely, uh, fiercely competitive. And I felt like, well, I was just dooming myself to failure if I wasn't going to commit myself to it 100%. And I just couldn't give, picture giving up a career in music and trying for some safe but dull and sterile office job. Um, and this was not only because being a musician was all I had prepared for for the last 11 years of my life. But I was also following this American mindset that your career, your job is your identity. It's who you are. And I felt that being a musician was my identity, so therefore I had to pursue it as a career, um, even if it was making me stressed and miserable. Now, around the time my son was uh, just turned one, I was lucky enough to get in a car accident that put me in a wheelchair for about a month and left me unable to walk well for about five months. And this was lucky because it forced me away from my day-to-day -day routine of waiting tables and pursuing music, and it forced me to just um, sit back and reevaluate my career goals in light of my new family responsibilities. So it was during these months of recovery that I came to grips with the fact that, at least for me, um, a professional pursuit of music was no longer compatible with having a happy life. But now, um, I was floundering when it came to what new career I should go, to, uh, go into, because I felt like I was confronted with conflicting goals. Now, on the one hand, I wanted something family compatible, something that would give me, uh, allow me to spend time with my wife and child and pay me a high enough salary that I could comfortably support them and uh, not have to struggle from paycheck to paycheck. But on the other hand, it seemed that the best paying jobs are something that I would have to work hard at, um, especially since I was starting my career over from what I felt at the time was the old age of 27. And it seemed to me that this was going to lead to dedicating so much time to learning new skills that I'd end up ignoring my family again. And part of me was actually still okay with ignoring my family again, because I still had this American mindset that your career is your identity. So following that guideline, in a way, I was really just looking for something new that I could be uh, a workaholic about again. Anyway, trying to figure out what kind of work would lead to, um, what kind of work could satisfy 
these contradictory goals led me to the question of, well, what role really should a job have in my life? And this led to the question, well, why do we have to work anyway? Now, the answer to this question came to me from several different sources, including anthropology and economics and social criticism and self-help. And in trying to tie all these different pieces together, I felt I had to write it all out just to organize my thoughts. Uh, and this ended up with me uh, writing a book on it, um, which I first published under the title of Why Do We Have to Work? Uh, here's what it looked like at the time. And I later revised it and changed the title to Hunting, Gathering, and Video Games. And here's what the book currently looks like. Now, I'm not sure the title is a big improvement, but I do like the new cover a lot. And I call it Hunting, Gathering, and Video Games because that's the title of the first chapter, which looks for the common link between uh, the prehistoric hunter and gather and today's video game programmers. All right, to be continued in part one.